In the previous video, we were forced to end our exploration of this historical blast furnace after spotting a security patrol on site, so make sure to click here and watch it in case you missed it. Today, we're in the now demolished orange factory. We visit a cool car graveyard, an abandoned mall house, and make sure to stay tuned for a bonus clip right at the end. Unlike its most famous counterpart, the Blast Furnace, this orange factory doesn't have many historical pictures or documents available for the public. We know it's been operating for decades, producing synthetic graphite from the byproducts of the steel blast furnace. This factory has been occasionally used even after closing, and the commissioning has been going on for a long time, so the place has changed much through the years. For example, this used to be a closed control room, but the walls have since been stripped down and taken away. Though it doesn't mention any specific year, that label says this appliance was installed before 1960, but due to the industrial history of this area, we can safely assume this factory is much older than that. This building is made of six very tall floors, but it looks mostly hollow inside, as this huge hole in the middle travels the whole distance from the ground floor up until the very top. On the right, you can see the huge crane installed on the ground floor, and on the ground itself, a lot of waste disposal bags. We will take a closer look at them later on in the video. As I mentioned in my previous video, the end of the steel industry was a great tragedy for this region and for this city in particular, and I think it shows when you take a look at this mostly abandoned and silent industrial landscape. We'll take a better look from the top floor in a few minutes. Maybe it's just me, but I'm always amazed at what heavy industry could achieve even back in the days. For example, these are extremely heavy objects and we're now on the fourth floor of the building. I guess you can say I'm still easily impressed when it comes to industrial locations, but small amazements like this are part of the reason why I love exploring them. Anyway, coming up, it's my favorite shot of the whole building, but you let me know what you think in the comments below. I thought it was somebody opening a door on the oh ground floor. Oh, 
inside the building. As you heard, a lot of clanging and banging started happening from out of nowhere. But luckily for us this time, no guards were present on site. It was just due to a huge thunderstorm raging on the outside. We started exploring the ground floor and went to the back of the building where we were supposed to find an abandoned fire truck. Much to our demise, it was taken away. But we still managed to find some leftover machinery. We make sure there's nothing left to see here and we move on to our next location, a car graveyard behind a burnt down house. The house caught on fire many years ago and the owner left everything behind, including his most prized possession in his car collection, this Lancia Flavia Pininfarina design from the 70s. Unfortunately, much like the orange factory we just visited, the cleanup of this place started not long after our visit. The house has been demolished, the cars have been taken away, even the trees were cut down. Nowadays, this place is just an empty field. The final destination of our trip is called the Mold House, and you can see why if you look at the walls. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any information about the owners, why they left or when, so if anyone from the area knows, please let me know in the comments below. It will be greatly appreciated. It smells like... You know. I'd love to hear your opinions on this, because to me, everyday objects such as this heater in the living room or the washing machines and fridge in the next one always feel like connections to the people who used to live or work in the place I'm visiting. They are reminders of everyday, normal life that used to happen behind these walls and then suddenly ended for reasons we may never know. It's here. It's on the ground. I think it fell. Yeah, the table is broken. So this is 
Harkins Snarkhorst. It's, it's, it's Biggie Sausage and it's freaking delicious. So, so you, d you dump it on the grass yeah, first? Okay, wait for a second. I'm sure it's not. Ah, uh, you are a pro. We do this all the time. <laughs> Open one up. <laughs> <laughs> you take your mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like an assistant now. <laughs> you are. Gordon Ramsay. You know fuck assistant. you. <laughs> and then you put it in your mouth. Wow. You should try it. Yeah, let me try it. So I'm trying. <laughs> Netherlands <laughs> finest here. It's not oh, in God. the middle of your sandwich though. It's fine, it's fine. Let me try. Mm. You can be honest. It's good, right? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not far from what I will do at home, so. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next episode from the top of the Oculus Tower.